Hearing the word maritime disaster, what pops into our minds is the famous Titanic that took the lives of 1,500 people on board. There have been much worse maritime catastrophes during the past two centuries, like the disaster of the Wilhelm Gustloff drowning around 10,000 people. Yes, you heard that right. Let's dig deep into the pages of history to uncover the worst maritime disasters in history. Let's start with the smallest death toll. During World War II, the Josef Stalin was a Soviet passenger ship that was transformed into a troop carrier. The vessel was employed in the evacuation of Tallinn in 1941 and the evacuation of the Soviet naval base in Hungo, Finland later that year. The ship reached the Gulf of Finland on December 3, 1941 with 5,589 men on board and ran into three German mines. While the crew was attempting to save the ship from the sea mines, Finnish soldiers discovered it and opened fire, causing onboard ordnance to detonate. The Josef Stalin carried 5,589 troops and 3,849 perished, and the others were seized as prisoners of war by German forces. The Cunard Line's RMS Lancastria was a British ocean liner. The ship was refitted as a troop ship in April 1940. RMS Lancastria went off to help in the evacuation of British troops and residents from France under the leadership of Captain Rudolf Sharp. The ship set sail from Liverpool on June 14, 1940 and arrived in St. Nazaire on June 16. The Lancastria had taken between 4,000 and 9,000 migrants on board by the next day, including British citizens, troops, and other military authorities. A German Junkers U-88 aircraft attacked the ship at about 4 p.m., forcing it to capsize and drown within 20 minutes. More than 1,400 tons of petroleum poured into the sea and caught fire. While there were 2,477 survivors, determining the number of dead was difficult because the ship's loading was chaotic and many people embarked off the record. According to estimates, 4,000 and 6,500 people perished in the attack, either by drowning or suffocation due to the airstrike. The MV Doña Paz was a Philippine ferry operated by Sulpicio Lines. On the voyage from Leyte to Manila on December 20, 1987, the Doña Paz collided with the oil tanker MT Vector operated by Caltex Philippines. The tanker's load of 8,800 barrels of petroleum products burst, sparking a fast-moving inferno. Doña Paz took two hours to sink and the Vector followed two hours later. Only 24 passengers from the Doña Paz and two Vector crew members were rescued. Because no lifeboats could be suspended, the survivors were forced to swim through the flames to safety. According to the investigation reports, the official death toll was 4,317 passengers, 58 crew members of the Doña Paz, and 11 crew members of the Vector. The ship exceeded its authorized capacity of 1,518 passengers. Furthermore, the inquiry determined that the Doña Paz lacked radio and that the onboard crates housing the life jackets were all locked. The crew of the Vector was also deemed to be inadequately qualified and the tanker's operating license had expired. It took the authorities eight hours to hear of the accident and another eight hours for a search and rescue operation to begin, which was useless. Doña Paz was one of the deadliest maritime disasters of all time, with almost three times more casualties than the Titanic. The SS Cap Arcona was a luxury ocean liner set sail in 1927. With the approach of the British forces in April 1945, detainees from concentration camps were evacuated and brought to Lübeck. More than 9,000 captives from the Nungame concentration camp and death march survivors were carried aboard ships, including the crew of Cap Arcona. On May 3, 1945, with almost 6,000 passengers on board, it was attacked by British Air Force fighter bombers. Because of the shallow water, the Cap Arcona capsized but did not sink. 
approximately 5,000 of the captives on board were drowned burnt alive or shot dead. British forces shot at those who attempted to swim away from the shipwreck. The HS Armenia was a Soviet passenger ship built at the Baltic shipyard in Leningrad in November 1928. It could carry up to 980 people. During World War II, the Armenia served as a troop carrier. It evacuated soldiers, laborers, and materials from Odessa beginning on October 9, 1941. Due to the German invasion in November 1941, a hasty evacuation of the hospitals in Sevastopol was required and the Armenia was turned into a hospital ship. On November 6, 1941, the vessel embarked on a voyage to Yalta with around 4,000 injured medical personnel from 11 hospitals in Sevastopol. The Armenia was attacked by a German Heinkel HE-111 bomber and sank in four minutes, killing approximately 5,000 people on November 7th. Only eight persons survived the attack. Most dramatic maritime disasters took place at the end of World War II. Every country considered these evacuating ships their enemies and sacrificed the lives of innocent people. The MV Goya was a cargo ship constructed in 1940 for the Bergen-based shipping company in Norway. The Kriegsmarine took the Goya after the German takeover of Norway in April 1940. During the last months of the war, the ship was used to evacuate German territories in the east. In only four journeys, the ship had evacuated 19,785 people to the west by mid-April. The ship was scheduled to rescue additional injured troops and fleeing civilians from West Prussia on April 16th. The ship was attacked by the Soviet submarine L-3 at 11.52 p.m. with almost 7,000 people on board and sank within seven minutes. Only 176 individuals were rescued. The Nazi leadership had refused an early evacuation of East Prussia near the conclusion of World War II. As a result, following the Red Army's breakthrough on the Eastern Front in early 1945, many region residents were cut off from the rest of the Reich. On January 21st of that year, a series of transfers known collectively as Operation Hannibal started, during which injured troops and civilians were transferred by ship via the Baltic Sea to Western Reich territory. The evacuation also included the former cruise ship MV Wilhelm Gustloff, which had been converted to serve as a troop transporter. The Wilhelm Gustloff set up from Gdynia at approximately 1 p.m. on January 30th, 1945, with an estimated 10,300 people aboard, both troops and civilians, including many children. As the boarding was chaotic and hurried, the number of passengers and staff could never be accurately confirmed. The ship was first accompanied by two torpedo boats and the passenger ship Hansa, which was also loaded with citizens and soldiers. Shortly after the departure, one of the torpedo boats and the Hansa had technical difficulties and could not continue sailing. Due to the rapid change of circumstances, the Wilhelm Gustloff was left with only one escort, the torpedo boat Loa. At the time of departure, certain military personnel on board advised Captain Friedrich Peterson to sail through dark, shallow coastal areas where submarines could not operate. Due to the ship's significant burden, Captain Peterson opted to take a path across the deep sea. An unknown phony Navy radio communication advised the ship to switch on its lights to avoid colliding with one of the mine-hunting vessels on the way. Because of this warning, the Wilhelm Gustloff sailed with her lights turned on, making it easy for anybody to detect her. The Soviet submarine S-13 spotted the Wilhelm Gustloff at 9 p.m. and launched four torpedoes at the Wilhelm Gustloff. Three struck the ship at the bow and one at the engine room. The ship sank 23 nautical miles off the shore of Pomerania at 10.15 p.m., taking with it 9,400 passengers, many of whom were women and children. In terms of the number of people lost, the Wilhelm Gustloff sinking remains the deadliest maritime tragedy in human history. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, check out other historical videos on our channel. 
don't forget to click the bell icon so you don't miss out on such interesting topics.